Weaver, manager obviously of Harrogate Town. Simon, how has it been since you beat Torquay? Oh, it's been a superb time to be uh, manager of this football club and uh, really exciting. Uh, I've had a lot of attention from the media and it's been uh, really novel and quite quite different. Um, but it's been good for the confidence uh, for everyone involved. Um, but the the interest that's generated around town, um, it's just been it's been crazy. But uh, we've loved every minute of it, and we can't wait to get the game ahead on Saturday. You're obviously a very protective manager in the way that you um, you know you don't openly criticise the players. You like to keep it all sort of in house. How difficult has it been for you with the media intention on the game? Um, We've tried to get the, um, the balance right uh, for the players. I want them to get some attention because it's good for their egos and, and therefore the confidence. But hopefully um, they won't go too egotistical and, you know, and uh, get ahead of themselves. But I don't think they will because they're such a great bunch to be in and around. Um, but one thing we have to just make sure is that we train right, do things right on the pitch, but train according to you know the, the plans for Saturday. You know, we'll have the cameras there... Uh, on Thursday, um, and it, yeah, there is that media glare in, you know, and people, um, all the players will be aware of that. But, but we've got to make sure that we train um, and get out of training what we want for Saturday, because we want to go in with the intention of winning the game and not playing the occasion, playing the game. So there's been no phone calls from Steven Spielberg for you or Chib or Paul Beasley at the moment then that you know of? <laughs> no, no, not at all. But I hope it's a Steven Spielberg start to a film where it's all crash bang wallop and I hope we're uh, full steam ahead on that one. But uh, no, not quite. What was it like when, obviously, Sky Sports were down at the uh, 1919 venue? We were there for the draw on the Sunday and we got Hastings United. What was your initial reaction to the draw? Um, yeah, the initial it was... Fantastic bonus that it's at home because uh, we always seem to be away. Um, but yeah, it's so excited that it's a home tie where so many it will m- mean so much to so many people locally, and it's our chance to put put uh, the football club on the map within the town itself, but also um, uh, nationally, uh, football-wise. And um, let's let's get it out there that we can play some decent football. And we've now got a platform that does reach um, far and wide. But with regard to Hastings, um, I'm not made to sort of think, all oh, right, it's someone that's one league bit, we're playing as a team league below. You know, nothing's ever taken for granted by me. I, I just, uh, I'm glad that we've got an opportunity to obviously play at home. Um, and we will give it what for. Whoever, we, whoever we're playing against, we'll just give it 100%. Um, yeah, both teams think they've got a realistic chance because we're of the same type of level um, and so it's a good opportunity for both teams but whoever's the best team on the day will I'm sure prevail. Now with ticket sales obviously rapidly approaching the 2000 mark and probably like to go even higher, how important do you feel that, that crowd, you know, the fact that it's going to be the, probably the biggest crowd that's, you know, we've had at the CNG for an awful long time and could even beat the record, how important is that crowd going to be for the team? Oh, it's massive. I mean, I've been in the office to, uh, this morning and um, there's a count up and we're, we're over 2,000, the 2,000 mark now, uh, which, you know, sends all the airs on the back of my uh, back and neck up and, and there are quite a few airs, but, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I can't wait. It's going to get the juices flowing and, you know, there's a lot of scarves that have gone and, and the, you know, even a lot of hats and more merchandise, more gear and the more people can see in yellow and black and and vocally, you know, I remember the Alfton game a couple of years ago, and it was the tenth game unbeaten um, we had that season, and and, uh, and that meant such a lot to me. But the crowd was 500, and they were like a twelfth man. So we're hoping that whatever the crowd is in the end, it's going to be huge, and it will be players our twelfth man because um, the players, of, uh, this group of players, have a really good rapport with the supporters. Uh, the Hyde game in the FA Cup away from home, they saw us through that day. And uh, you know we were. It was an onslaught, late onslaught from us, and we got there. And sometimes you can really, I, I think you can really suck the, that ball into the goal if you if you've got enough willpower. We're going to have to mention the pitch. Obviously, it's been an area of concern uh, for obviously the players and the management and the chairman as well. I know a lot of work's gone into it. At this moment in time, how is it looking? 
Yeah, we had um, a guy on the pitch from the FA this morning because obviously they were a little bit concerned um, because because of the highlights and, and what it means to have two teams of this level at this stage in the FA Cup. So they really want it on, and so they've offered to help later on this week um, with the uh, by uh, giving us a, a thermal. A, a big thermal cover to scroll across, pull across the pitch, um, so that will really help against the freezing conditions. Um, but we're hoping that Hastings will come come with us on that because we still need to put some money in to borrow this thing. Uh, so we're, we're waiting back from them, and I'm sure they'll see the importance and, and the benefits that we'll both get um, in terms of you know the highlights on Saturday night. Uh, so fingers fingers uh, um, crossed that we're uh, we're going to get this game on. Um, it was looking a lot better than we envisaged this morning. Uh, walking across it, it was quite firm. I think that drainage aggregate that was put in a couple of weeks ago has had a really good effect on it. Um, and we, we, we're all, uh, all hands to the mass, we really want it on. Yeah. Um, want to mention a couple of players. I know that you're obviously very careful not to single out individuals for praise, because uh, you obviously see it as a team uh, effort, but I want to ask you about Paul Beasley especially. Uh, I mean, last season when he came on, he looked like he was getting you know, bullied an awful lot, maybe a bit out of his depth, but this season he's like a player possessed. What have you done to him? <laughs> well, I don't think it's anything I've done. I think, I think Paul has just realised that uh, maybe players have come and gone and he's still here. Um, and we've had a couple of good talks and, uh, where we just say it as we see it and I think we're both that kind of personality that we're hundred percenters and if I say something that I think look oh, Paul stop respecting um, our players even too much on the field the play in training um, get out there and just be yourself because one thing I did notice when he came to the club his 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 strength um, and aura on the pitch um, is his major strength but he's also got a fantastic first touch and when you look at his strengths, if he concentrates on that, um, he will get through. If he improves on other aspects, which he has done, then he can be a, a huge asset for us. And I thought on Saturday against Gainsborough, he was the outstanding forward on the pitch. Um, and I think he has been for some time now. And I can rely on him, and he is one of my main men. It must also be very pleasing, obviously, Paul, local lad, you know, that you've got that local talent, you've recognised it, nurtured it helped you through and obviously paying dividends now. I know that Harry Gate have put in a lot of emphasis on trying to bring local players through. Just know how pleasing is that for you that it's happening? Oh, it's, it's great and it was never going to be um, the click of the fingers and straight away we've got local lads in, in the team. I, I really probably wanted that straight off, you know, since I've been manager here, but I didn't know these leagues, I didn't know the local leagues, but now I've got people out there I can trust and trust their opinion and I had it early on about Paul Beasley, oh, he's a good lad, try and keep your eye on him, he's uh, your kind of character and I think um, it's paid off having those kind of contacts, um, but the likes of Craig McGill, I, I look at him and I think, you know, he, he's as good as there is for a 19, 20 year old goal, young goalkeeper, um, but it fills me with pride when I hear the lads like Adam Novakovsky talk about the local lads going for a bite to eat after on a Thursday night, um, that's what we're about and uh, no one can knock it. I want to uh, obviously mention Matthew Bloomer, Johnny Allen and Adam Novakoski. They seem to be coming in for a bit of stick from certain elements of the fans. What would you like to say in regards to that? Well, you know me, Peter. I, I, I don't, I'm not one for going on forums because I, I think that that's for fans. Um, they can enjoy that and uh, give as much stick or, or praise as, as they see fit and that's their platform to do so. Um, I, it disappoints me a little bit when you mention that three lads of a you know a winning side and winning squad at the minute are having any kind of abuse. Um, I think it is Matt Bloomer. He was he uh, went through thick and thin with us and never wanted to leave this football club when um, he ran away with Player of the Season three years ago. He had a t team of kids around him, but he encouraged everyone. He's massive in the changing room. And I think he's been an outstanding asset the last few games when we've really needed it. And so he'll be here uh, with me for some time yet. Yeah. Adam Novakowski, um is a huge asset to the club. He's six foot four, he's an athlete, absolutely rips. Um, he gets up and down the park. He, he's unfortunately he's not in the team uh, starting lineup in midfield at the minute. Um, 
but he's got every chance of, if he keeps putting pressure on like he is doing in training and it, it, it gains really the day he can also play centre half he looked like a Rolls Royce the other day um, and the other one you, you said on Johnny Allen I mean Johnny's so such a uh, character on him um, he helped us stay up last year when we had a number of injuries he played uh, with a tear in his calf when we really needed him strapped it up and to see us over the line and um, if people conveniently want to have issues then that's disappointing but they are all big talisman for this team and they're great in the changing room and they are assets on the field of play so I'm proud to have them uh, it's a shame that anyone gets any stick at this moment in time when it's a positive time for the club I want to go and mention the league now obviously we're sitting on the lower half but obviously we've got the games in hand how difficult is that going to be in some respects so with obviously the way the league's forming at the moment for Harrogate to climb do you see it as being a problem or is it something that you're obviously not worrying about at the moment with the cup no obviously we, I want to be when we're up higher in the league I'm always looking at the league table because uh, it's just a joy to, to see us uh, arrogate town up there. Um, I think we've only really slipped down because of because of, we've got games in hand, you know, and we've got a number of games in hand. Obviously, we lost last week at Stainbridge, but that was the first time in quite some time. Um, can't control it, not playing league games frequently, um, but we're trying hard to get the pitch in a decent state so we can have a consistent run of games after this FA Cup game. We'll have a massive game next week at Halifax, but we're pleased that that's on the Wednesday, so we've got a bit more time in between. Um, and we'll aim to get something from the game, and we'll aim to uh, play as well as we we did do against Vauxhall and previously with Brackley, um, because we think we've got a good balance and we want to finish in a good position this season. When we spoke um, quite a while back, um, when your dad had first come on board as a chairman, you obviously slightly wary mm. but obviously to be expected how has that relationship now between you and your dad and manager and chairman changed over the years well I think we're only probably is it 18 months into it now so we're still we're still learning about each other uh, and from each other in terms of it, it's totally separate once we're in the football club when we meet up and talk about football it's on a professional basis because um because it's got to be. This is a serious level of football, and you know we've both put our heart and soul into it now. And yeah, it, sometimes I just have to pinch myself and think, uh, you know, crack the, the dad there again at the club. What's he doing here? And of course, he's chairman. But I've got my budget. I worked to that strictly. We've cut the budget from last last year. He's pleased with that, obviously, because it's seen more success, and yet the budget has slightly been cut, um, well, more than slightly. We've, we've done a job on that. Uh, I think he's pleased with the progress, he's pleased with the recent record and um, I think he justifies, more than justifies my position. I've uh, been in the game quite a long time now and in terms of managerial experience I'm, I'm, I'm building that up as well. Uh, so yeah, contact, my contact book has uh, got um, longer and longer. Um, I'm always on the phone to clubs beneath us and higher than us and at the same level. Uh, get on with a lot of people. and. Um, can call in a favour and that as well as the, the group of players we've got hopefully can push me on and push the team on. The club um, seems to be structured a lot more professionally now than it was before. I mean obviously we've got commercial managers, we've got youth development managers, press officers, that kind of thing now in the fold. How pleasing is that for you to sort of see the whole of the football club develop? Oh, it's great, it's great. You, you know you look at uh, like you said, uh, you've got the likes of yourself who will give up a lot of time for the club. Um, and it's endless, you know, what you do. And it, 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 it's sometimes a thankless task, and I'm sure. But, you know, and you, you look at the likes of John Gray and Phil Lee and, you know, giving up the time on a voluntary basis. And, you know, they're not doing it um, uh, for any other reason than they've got their hearts in the club and they're enjoying it. Um, and it's all about trust. We've got people in there we can trust now, I mean, in all, all positions. And you know that they're going to turn up on time, do it right, and um, and they're not just going to uh, pack up at the end of the uh, end of the day and forget about it. They, they take it home with them. That you get emails later on from from directors, from people uh, in the administration part, or from co our coaching staff, all emailing each other. And it's midnight, and no, no one switches off, and then they're up first thing doing it. 
And so I think that much energy, and, and but the trust between the departments is, is right, and it's got to be. I've got to just trust uh, John Gray or Phil Lee does their does their role correctly, um, because they are high up in the profession and the trustworthy guys. And I think there's a buzz around the club because we trust each other, and and you can only do it as a together bunch of people. Simon, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk for you. Uh, good luck again on Saturday against Athens, and hopefully we'll be having another interview when we draw Manchester United out of the cap. <laughs> I hope so. Thanks, Peter.